Minis Forum has a new series of Mini PC. It's the AI series, and this is the first of the new models. It is the X1 Pro, powered by that APU was seen from AMD that I've covered. Well, now it was the last Mini PC in this one also. It's the Ryzen AI 9. HX 370. It does have integrated graphics, which is the Radeon 890M. Very potent, great performance for integrated graphics. Now, this configuration here has 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and at the time of this video, it costs 899 US dollars. And I think that's an okay price. Still a bit on the pricey side for what it really is, but it's an expensive chipset. Included you'll find some paperwork, they have a power cable, HDMI cable, vertical stand, there's one heat sink with some thermal pads there for only one of the SSDs, but you can install an extra two, so three in total, Visa mounting bracket with some screws. The top of the X1 does have this nice alloy build to it, the Mini's Forum branding right there, and a fingerprint sensor. Up the front, there's the co-pilot button. We have dual microphones. There's built-in speakers there on the bottom. Not good stereo separation from them. They sound okay, but I would definitely want to use external speakers. However, it's a nice option, of course, to have. Here we have our 3.5 mm millimeter with mic support, USB 4, so that's 40, 40 gigabits per second. Two type A USB 3.2s. These are 10 gigabits per second power on with status LED within it. Either side, nothing here. And then at the back, we have a little vent here. That's for the power supply. There's another cooler in there. I'll show you that when we have a look at the internals. And we have the power in. Of course, with its internal power supply, that's it. You just plug the cable into it. This is the cooler there. Oculink, so that is 63 gigabits per second. And USB 4, another one. So great to have two of those, both of them 40 gigabits per second, of course. And display port, HDMI, and 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, both of those. And a type A here, that's five gigabits per second. So there's just USB two speeds there. Kensington lock slot and a reset there for the CMOS, the BIOS settings. Then the underside, so we have our intake vent along here and the speakers. Now, if you want to gain access to the internals, there are four screws here, but a hidden fifth one under a little rubber gasket. I really wish the brands wouldn't do that. But once you remove it, then this back plate comes off. However, as you can see, that's only good for maintenance to clean the dust out of both of the fans here. That's our speaker right there. But to gain access to the internals, where you've got your SSDs and then the RAM, we're gonna to have to remove all of this around the outside. This step is a bit of a pain, but they have little arrows. You can see all the screws that you must remove. You don't need to remove two here. Well, you can't actually get access to them because they're on the other side. Then this lifts up. Now be careful because there are some cables attached. This is a power cable because we have the internal power supply there. The BIOS battery, easily accessible, our Wi-Fi card, and then we have the two spare slots, so three in total and the RAM. So good for upgrades. And once that is out of the way, then you're able to replace and change things. And you can see how large this cooler is, is here. So that is for the chipset. The other cooler you just saw, that one's for the internal power supply. Now the BIOS is somewhat disappointing because we don't have any advanced settings with it. You've got your setup, your boot menu, and you can't even change a power limit here. All we have is CPU configuration. I thought, oh, power limit should be in there, but no, it's not there. But it is 65 watts, I found that out. And AMD CBS, CPU comment options, core performance boost, and other things are available. But again, there's nothing for power limits. There's no way to tweak the RAM or anything like that. We've got AC power loss, power loss options. So you can set that to always on if you want it to always boot up. If it's, a, if it's a server, of course, that is the setting you're going to use there. Graphics configuration, this is one at least that we can tweak. So it's by default on four gigabytes, sorry, eight here for our frame buffer size. I'm gonna leave that because we've got 64 gigabytes of RAM having eight allocated to the Radeon 890M. Not a problem at all. So that's it, a disappointing bias. I really do wish it was fully unlocked like other brands. Here we are now in Windows 11. So things of interest to note here in the device manager, the wireless card is a MediaTek and yes, it's Wi-Fi 7, so future proof. And Realtek for those two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports. And they seem to be absolutely fine working, no issues with any of that. 
and I am getting 2.5 gigabit through this with my router that I've got, the ASUS, that all does check out. Radeon graphics, the 890M as mentioned before, and as I showed you in the BIOS, it's got eight gigabytes dedicated to that, which can scale. It can actually scale up a little bit more if needed. And then the RAM timings. So the timings of the RAM are okay. They're not brilliant. And the speed, 5,600 mega transfers. Now, if you get this same processor, this chipset, a Ryzen AI9, the HX370, with the onboard embedded RAM, running at 8,000 mega transfers, it will have much better timings than this. I'll just quickly show you under memory here, because we can take a look. Oh, it's not being stressed out at the moment, but it's cast latency when running at the full speeds is just 46 clocks, which is fine for laptop memory, which is what it is, but you will get much better with that onboard stuff there. Now, if I go to the stress test, I can push it to the limit here, and I've seen that it is running 65 watts that's our tdp even though okay the first screen did show under cpu it's showing it as 28 watts that's the default tdp but no this is definitely running when you see under here it'll pull 65 under the package power so that's the power limit that minis forum have set now the cooling on this really good i am so pleased with the cooling on this particular mini pc from them i can't even hear the fan when it is idle, it's on all the time. The fans are always going, but it's very, very quiet. And under full load now, super quiet. In fact, I can't pick it up really properly with my microphone. You have to trust me on this one. The, the fan noise and the cooling, excellent. Thermals, well, it doesn't go over 75 degrees. It normally sits around in the late 60s. So they've done just an amazing job there. But what about our performance here? Okay, let's jump into some benchmarks. This is Geekbench 6. So almost 3,000 for single core, 15 and a half thousand for multi-core performance. That's good. That's better than the Nukebox, the Evo X1 I did review from GMK Tech. That's the last mini PC with the same chipset. It had a very good single core score, but the multi was down for some reason, even though it has the faster RAM. However, when testing out integrated graphics, that faster RAM of the other unit that's embedded, you can't upgrade it, you're stuck with either 32 or 64 gigabytes, uh, was faster because the graphics score here for the Radeon 890M here is 3801, whereas with this mini forums PC, mini PC here, it's 3148, so somewhat slower, and that is because of the RAM, okay? The integrated graphics definitely favors the faster RAM, and we're talking a huge difference 5,600 versus 8,000 mega transfers. That is a big difference there. But what about the eGPU? I briefly tested that out with my RTX 4090. Here is the result of Time Spy, a game with the GM KTEC Mini PC. I was, as I mentioned in that review, very disappointed with its Oculink performance. 63 gigabits per second, but it was not running at that 63 gigabits per second. And it showed, it reflected in the graphics score of only being 25,703. Good news is, now with Mini's Forum with this one, they've done an excellent job with that Oculink. Fantastic score, almost 31,000. Huge difference. So it is performing properly, and this is what it should be like, and should have been like on that other Mini PC. So if you intend to run the Mini's Forum external GPU or any other external GPU with just using Oculink, this is probably the mini PC so far to go for. Really good scores with that there, so I'm pleased. So great performance. But what about the power limit? What is it running? So I've done some testing of that, and I should already have this running. Yes, I do in the background. And stressing it out, it gets up to 65 watts here with our power limit. Well, that's saying 60 at the moment. The fan noise, absolutely fantastic. It does seem to always be on but it's very quiet. And when you push it under load, benchmarks, gaming, you can hear it, but barely. Excellent fan noise. And it will handle 4K video. So I did this test with the last mini PC as well, but let's have a look. Radeon with the now slower RAM speeds. Will it play back the 8K video just as well? Seems to be a little bit choppy at times. And I noticed that, yes, it can play this very demanding 100 and 50 megabit per second 8k file 
from a drone. It's doing it. The Radeon 890M graphics, integrated graphics, very good playback. And then when we get onto video editing, as I'll show you shortly, it can even handle something demanding like 8K. But one last benchmark, and this is here, our Cinebench R23 scores. So you can see, hopefully, this clearly labeled. On the left is the Mini's Forum. On the right, the last one that I covered. Okay, that's the Evo X1. Super similar scores. So 22,000 for multi-core and just over 2,000 for the single core performance for Cinebench R23. Both of them excellent. I mean, these are powerful mini PCs. And this is what is very surprising. So integrated graphics now since the Arc graphics with Intel and since, yeah, probably with AMD, the 780M and now the 890M, you're able to edit 4K video fine. It's fast, it's smooth, as long as you don't have crazy amounts of transitions, grading, editing, uh, various different layers as well of video. But here I'm stepping things up on integrated graphics like I did with the last video, with that last mini PC with this exact same chipset, 8K. I'm editing 8K video, that's absolutely crazy on integrated graphics. Now with 64 gigabytes of RAM versus the 32 I had before, it is playback here and land is looking Xbox good. Let me just Max. mute myself. The playback, yes, it's a little choppy. It isn't perfect. And I expect this for very demanding 8K files, but it's possible. And this is playing back at a quarter resolution. I think that's incredible for integrated graphics that we've got to that point now you can edit basic 8K and slightly more moderate timelines with 4K video on these. It's phenomenal, really, that huge leap that we have now with the pot potential and power that these mini PCs have. Now, the export time of this one, this is an eight, almost, in, well, it's a nine minute clip. Export time's not good at 8K. It will take about 27 minutes to fully export the whole thing into 8K, that is. Which again, I think for integrated graphics, it's still a good result. Getting on to a little bit of gaming performance, just a few quick tests though, but I am on the latest AMD drivers and I have the global experience thing just on default. So I don't want any FSR, super resolution, none of those things are enabled. That's my this is Kingdom Calm God. Deliverance 2. I got a couple of bandits and with the medium settings at 1080p, I can see the frame rate is definitely worse than the last mini PC. It's not really looking that good. And it's 30 frames per second. Oh, not doing too well again. Uh, I'll get the dog to get onto him. All right, that's one down at least. I got this guy with the mace. And it's a little choppy, this performance here. I'll see if I can try and block and get him at the same time. All right, got rid of those two. So that was a much better fight than my last test. Yeah, 30 frames per second. I mean, it is playable, but a bit choppy. You probably want to use an external GPU for this game at 1080p. I don't think that's a good enough frame rate. Cyberpunk 2077, I do have it set to the low preset and that is using some resolution scaling there, as you can see. FSR and the resolution 1080p. Now this is the in-game benchmark, so you can run this on your own system or other systems you might have seen, just to see how it does perform. And the result, 41.56 average frames per second, low preset, 1080p. The Witcher 3 with all the latest patches, this is set to the low preset, 1080p, and we do have around 50 frames per second, areas with a lot of NPCs like right now, you get a bit of a frame dip. Okay, it hasn't really dropped down too much. So well optimized for integrated graphics, this game, yes, it's old. It still looks very good, I think. And great to see that it is running quite well here with the Radeon 890M. Checking back on that power limit, so again, it hasn't exceeded 65 watts. That is the TDP that Minis Forum have set. And you can see temperatures, fantastic, really good. So 72.5 degrees after benchmarks, gaming, all that sort of stuff, excellent. Thermals are great, really good fan noise. They've done a, a good job with the cooling here. All up, Minis Forum have an excellent mini PC with the X1 Pro. Fan noise, really good. Thermals. 
under control completely, it doesn't go over 75 degrees Celsius, even when you push it really hard. I love the fact that we can install an additional two SSDs and have three in total. Fingerprint reader is there, it's handy if you don't want to type in passwords, simply just scan your finger. You've got the Wi-Fi 7 on board, thermals are great, the RAM can be upgraded, but this also is a con because the RAM isn't as fast as the integrated soldered on quad channel RAM I've seen in other models with this chipset. So it's both a pro and a con. That's really the only fault that I can find with this unit. Otherwise, Minis Forum had done a fantastic job here with the X1 Pro. Thanks a lot for watching this review.